that's coming up in the next segment. But as promised, I told you I'd take your calls for Webster Tarpley. So let's kick it off with Dan in Pennsylvania. Dan, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Yes, um, I was just wondering. There was a report uh, that came out on Friday that the Gates Foundation dumped a whole bunch of uh, pharmaceutical stock. Mm -hmm. That they did what? They dumped they, a bunch of pharmaceutical stock, apparently. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen the uh, report. What 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 did they say they exactly dumped? You know, was it? It's the Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation. Yeah, it's uh, the foundation. Also, it's on the Wall Street Journal. Actually, I got it off a of raw story. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll have to check it out. Look, and, uh, uh, if, you know, in terms of the background about it, though, at pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceutical lobby is called PHRMA. And the head of this, uh, the, the spokesperson is this guy, Towson. He's a former Democratic congressman, Republican Democrat from, uh, from Louisiana, I think. So Billy Towson, T-A-U-Z-I-N. Yeah, he was old. one of the 25 uh, health insurance executives and insurance executives who were supporting Obama. They trooped into the White House. The Obama White House said, Obama had said many times that all of this would be on C-SPAN, but it never was. So they made secret 30 deals, and in the, in the case of insurance, we've gone through it. For pharma, it was two things, that whatever is passed now will block any importation of cheaper uh, prescription drugs from Canada, where they're much cheaper, or anywhere else, uh, regulated, you know, uh, Europe, whatever it is. And I have the article right that here. there be no haggling, no haggling on prices. So Medicare, with the tremendous buying power, should be able to force down the prices through the principle of quantity buying, as we read in all of our economics uh, textbooks. But they don't want that. They don't want the free market. Notice, they talk free market. They don't want it. Ultimately, nobody wants it when it comes to them. So the, the pharma people want to keep, uh, they want to keep the prices high. So Obama has been willing to give them that. And then they say, we'll come up with up to 80 billion of savings, but not more than 80 billion. Well, up to 80 billion goes from $1 to $80 billion. So this is worthless. The one thing they promise is that they'll give Obama $150 million of television advertising. You will have noticed that Harry and Louise, the people who were put up by the lobbyists to block the Clinton health plan, are now supporting the Obama health plan. So Harry and Louise have been brought back to dupe you into supporting Obama. And this is the secret, that the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies are in bed with Obama. And the Democrats try to hide this, of course. Right? When Pelosi comes out and says the insurance companies are the villains, this is pure demagogy, right? These are the people that she takes orders from every day. I'm sure she sent them a note saying, you know, I'm going to have to pop off against you tomorrow. Don't take it seriously. It's just for these idiots in the Democratic base. Let's go to Wayne in Florida. Wayne, what's on your mind? You with us, Wayne? I guess we'll skip over to Wilson in Michigan. Wilson, what do you got for him? Hey, Jason. Hey, how's how you doing? doing? Hi. Hi, Mr. Tarpley. I Hello. have a question for Mr. Uh, Tarpley about uh, LaRouche's plan for health care. He suggested possibly rolling back the HMOs and going back to the full burden standard, and I assume you're familiar with that plan. I've read about it, but I, I didn't get too many of the details, and I was hoping you could elaborate on that and explain it if you're familiar with it. Well, LaRouche, LaRouche, of course, is irrelevant and discredited. Right, this, He's riding off into the sunset. But uh, the, the, the things that you've pointed out, uh, I, I think, are uh, of some interest. Right, uh, the, the, the LaRouche never passed the Hill-Burton law, but let me go back to the Hill-Burton law, since this was there uh, before most of us came along. This was uh, Mr. Hill of Alabama. And, and uh, Congressman Burton, so it's 1946, and they set a target saying we ought to have between 4.5 and 5.5 beds per thousand of the U.S. population. Now, right now, we're at 3.2, and that's a, that's a big difference. That's really one-third, you know, you'd have to build one-third more than what you have now to get to what was considered the minimum of 1946. And this points to a very interesting thing. If you don't have hospitals, how can you have health care? This whole health care debate is crazy in the sense that it seem, seems to assume that doctors and hospitals will be there if you just, you know, make some kind of an ukaz, right, some kind of executive order. Uh, my program for a recovery in the United States would include building 1,000 hospitals immediately, take 0%, 
credit from the nationalized Fed. The states and localities become the, the people doing the ordering. They supervise the project. Build 1,000 hospitals, 500 beds each. That would give you about the 500,000 beds that you're missing to get to the minimum of 1946. My personal program is simple. Three points. Medicare for all. Medicare for anybody who wants it. You want it, you got it. You don't want it, then go do whatever you want. But I think most people, Medicare, if fully funded, works pretty well for a lot of people. Second point, how do you pay? What's the one thing in this country that's not overtaxed? Wall Street. Wall Street turnover. It means a Tobin tax. 1% tax on securities, right? So derivatives, stocks, options, futures, bonds, foreign exchange, commodities, and so forth. We pay sales tax. Bankers pay nothing. Let them pay a sales tax on these huge flows, right? They've got high-frequency trading. They've got flash trading. That's all wonderful, boys. You want to do that, just put 1% in the kitty. Probably half of it for the federal government, half of it for the states. And then the third thing is, if you want to save money, there's only one way to do it, and that is to find cures. You've got to come up with $100 billion, and I would have, I would have put this in the stimulus, $100 billion immediately for as much research as you can fund into cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and the rest of the gamut of dread diseases. If you want to save money, you find a cure for cancer, you will save tremendous amounts of money, and you won't need these death boards. So no death boards, but find cures. And you notice that this stuff is all missing. There's nothing about building hospitals. There's nothing about training doctors, right, finding ways so they don't come out of medical school with several hundred thousand dollars of debt. So they're coming from other countries where medical education is, is free or, or sometimes very low cost. And then, and then the question of, um, well, hospitals, doctors, and, and, and the beds, right? But Webster, you know, that, that last point about curing diseases, if that were to happen, doesn't that uh, really just challenge the establishment on so many levels? Because, number one, they're not going to be able to, you know, charge you till you, you're dead, basically, which is what they do with most people with cancer. I mean, these people, you know, pay exorbitant amounts of money, uh, even with their insurance, to try to stay alive. And, you know, let, let's be honest, 90, you know, five times out of 100, it doesn't work. I mean, is it really in their interest? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that at all. If you look at the, the longevity rates of cancer survivors, mm -hmm. they're increasing. I mean, the, the, the progress made in cancer treatment in the last 10 or 15 years is impressive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't be pessimistic at all. Cancer used to be a death sentence. It is not. So I think you're, you're much too pessimistic on, on medicine. I think you're, you're, kind of, you're kind of going overboard and in that direction. The well, I just, look is, at all, I just look at all these, these people out there like Holdren that are saying, you yeah, know, fine. we have too many say, people. Look, the, here's okay. the reality. The broad social reality is that longevity in the 20th century went from 35, 40 in many places to 70, 75, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that's, you can't argue with that. That works. So mm -hmm. what you've obviously got to do is say, you know, now in the deregulated time after 1968, yeah, we got mercury and vaccines. We've got a whole series of things that would demand a very, very robust regulatory agenda, right, to go in there and stop some of these abuses. This is a little bit like the situation of right after 1900 when the, when the Food and Drug Administration came into existence in the first place. The problem is that government agencies like the FDA or, or things like this, right, the, the, um, the, the, uh, the Pharmaceutical Watchdog Commission too, right, the Food and Drug Administration, Mm -hmm. They become not government agencies that regulate. They become lobbies for the powerful interest, ultimately Wall Street, that, that they're supposed to be policing. And this, this is the problem. See, if you think government is the root of the problem, it, it, it makes no sense because these, these places are not acting like government institutions that ram regulations down the necks of, of powerful interests. No. They're owned by the powerful interest. In other words, the main problem with the U.S. government is it's owned and controlled by Wall Street mm -hmm. and not the other way around. So uh, you're ultimately, you have to, your problem is, what are you going to go for, the cape or the matador? The cape is the government, in effect. The matador is Wall Street, the people who really make these decisions. So what you would need to do is struggle to get the government under other kinds of control and then use the powers of the government against, against Wall Street. This has happened. And I would not be pessimistic about medical science, because once you give up on science, technology, and progress, 
you are in a, a situation of total cultural despair. In other words, then there's then you're in a, a blind alley, right? Well, You've I'm got not, the civilization so the, with no way out. Yeah, but I'm not against the, the technology and the progress. I just don't think that the establishment is going to make it viable for people to be cured from these diseases. Yeah, if so they don't organized. Have, 